Hi, my name is Sherry Annick Churchill, librarian. Today, I'm here to read to you a book that I absolutely love, The Princess and the Warrior. It is by Duncan Tonatio. So at my school, my students know that when I love a book, I will really tell them how much I love a book. I love this book. I have taught this book with multiple grades, mainly because it gives me an excuse to read the book again. Um, it's a beautiful book. I really encourage you to actually check out a physical copy of this yourself because the author, illustrator Duncan Tonatio, he does some amazing things with his artwork. Um, you see an incredible amount of detail, which you're going to miss um, when I show you, but hopefully you just get a taste of the amazing storyteller that he is and you go and pick up this book yourself and check it out a little bit more. Um, I hope you enjoy this book. And this is a tale of two volcanoes is the subtitle. Once upon a time, there lived a kind and beautiful princess named Itza. Even though she was the daughter of an emperor, she loved to spend time with the people who grew corn in the milpas. Milpas are fields. She liked to teach them poetry or flor y canto. And I love this description of poetry because flor y canto, in Spanish, that means flower and song. And poetry can really be very much like that. Suitors traveled from distant lands to woo her. They presented her with rare and lavish gifts, such as quetzal feathers and turquoise necklaces. They would all say the same thing. You were the most beautiful maiden in the land. Marry me, princess, and you will live in my luxurious palace. You won't have to spend time in the fields ever again. No, thank you, Itza would reply. She was not interested in any of the suitors or their gifts. So I think they're also missing out that she likes to spend time in the milpas, right? She loves spending time there, and it's, she's not looking for an escape from that. One day, a warrior named Papoko came to see her. Princess, I know you have a kind and beautiful heart, for I've seen you teaching floricanto to the villagers in the milpas. I don't have expensive gifts to offer, but if you marry me, I promise that I will love you for who you are. I will stay by your side no matter what, as long as the tonatio rises, as long as the sensing bell bird sings. Papoko's words were music to Itza's ears. She could hear the honesty in his voice, and she fell in love. The emperor did not want his daughter to marry a mere soldier. He wanted her to marry a wealthy and powerful Tesloni, a ruler. But he knew that Popoko was the best and bravest warrior in his kingdom. The emperor and his people had been at war with Jaguar Claw, the Tesloni of a neighboring land, for years, and there seemed to be no end in sight. He called Popoko to him. Popoko, the emperor said, if you defeat Jaguar Claw once and for all, I will let you marry my daughter Itza. Popoko and Itza were overjoyed. Popoko gathered his most courageous men and marched off to war. So let me just pause here. Do you think this is a good plan to have to go to war to marry the person you love? I would disagree with this being a good idea, but let's see. I'm never a good idea. Of, I, I'm never in, in uh, favor of war to, uh, to marry the person you love. And this is what war looked like at that time. It was definitely very different. And you can see a lot of the instruments are quite different. Papoko de defeated, fought numerous battles. He and his men were injured and almost defeated many times. But when the end seemed near, Papoko would always think of Itza waiting for his return. He would defend himself with his chimaye, so right there, attack with his machuatil, and inspire his men to fight with even more courage than before. Slowly the tide turned, and Baboko and his men began winning battles. It was clear they would soon defeat Jaguar Claw. That's good. Okay. Realizing this, Jaguar Claw devised a plan to steal from Baboko what the warrior cherished most. He bribed one of Baboko's personal messengers. Tell Itza that Baboko has been killed and offer her this potion, Octoli, to soothe her grief. So he's bribing one of Popoko's personal messengers. Everything is lost, princess, the messenger said sadly when he arrived at the palace. Popoko and his men fought bravely, but they were defeated and killed. No, that cannot be, cried Itza. She locked herself in her chamber and wept and refused to eat or speak with anyone. That night, the messenger came to her room. 
I know your heart is shattered as if it were made of obsidian glass, he said. But take this drink, princess. It will help ease your grief. Itza took the potion and drank it all. Lying down on her pet letta, she fell into a deep sleep. The next day, before night fell and the first Sita Yi appeared in the sky, Popoko defeated Jaguar Claw. Unaware of the lies the messenger had told, the great warrior and his troops marched back to the palace in triumph, ready to share the good news with the princess and the emperor. Let's see what they find. But when they arrived, they were met with disbelief. Popoko! cried the said the emperor. One of your messengers told us that you were dead. Itza was heartbroken. She took a special octoly to ease her pain, and now we cannot wake her. That, this can't be true, said Popoko. Itza, my beautiful princess, has to awaken. He ran to her chamber. He kissed her and held her in his arms. He called out her name over and over, but Itza did not wake up. Cool air will surely revive her, Popoko told the emperor. He carried Itza through the throngs of villagers who wept as they passed, past the mutas, and all through the night to the top of a teplato. Now, do you, sometimes I feel better when I get some cool air, right, if you have a headache or something, but do you think this is going to um, revive her? He laid her on the shoke shield bed. He knelt down beside her. The cool mountain air soon turned to snow, but still the princess did not wake up. But Boko refused to move. He stayed next to Itza, just as he had promised when he first met her. As long as the Tonadio rises, as long as the Sentinel heard sing. In time, where there was once a princess with her true love by her side, two volcanoes emerged. One is known as Ita Chihuato, or Sleeping Woman. The other is known as Popo Capotel, or Smoky Mountain. Ita Chihuato continues to sleep, but Popo Capotel spews ashes and smoke from time to time, as if attempting to wake the sleeping So I hope you enjoyed one of my favorite stories. Thanks for listening and keep on reading.